This is the lab on simple machines. As you see from the motivation, motivation here, the six bullet points show that the lever, the wheel and axle, inclined plane, block and tackle, wedge and screw. These are the classical simple machines. There are a couple more, which is the gears and hydraulics. I don't have them on here because I only have the classical ones. There's a footnote why that is, because in ancient times they just couldn't be produced. So anyway, I left those two out of, uh, out of these here. Out of this list and if you actually look in other languages interestingly enough we find six simple machines when you look them up in English but in other languages like French or German you find four or five because some of them for example are actually a combination the wheel and axle is actually the a lever that is gently attached to a wheel or somebody could say hey the inclined plane is just a wedge or the screw itself is just a wedge on a helical plane inclined plane all right let's get going here so pre-lab let's see experiment so these are the objectives for that figure out the actual mechanical advantage and what a simple machine is doing and so on and then comes the theory part and notice this is very very long because once i started writing something about one simple machine i just couldn't stop i had to write something about everything so anyway, then we get to the equipment needed. Doesn't look like a lot. I will show the incline in the video. I will actually leave out the pulley system, the actual experiment, but you have to use an applet in order to do that. All right, so let's look at the data table. In the video, you will see that I have an example for the incline plane and the block and tackle. So please follow the two examples closely. This, by the way, is the block and tackle setup. Just a fancy word for calling it the pulley system. Okay, then you will do the, I'm sorry, not you, but I did the inclined plane in the video. So look out for this one here. Then I will skip as an experiment myself, the block and tackle. I also don't have an applet for the incline, but I do have an applet and I think it's really cool for the pulley simulation and it really mimics what I wanted to do in the actual lab. So this one you have to do. Then the video continues. This is an actual kind of like almost industrial way of doing it. So jacking up a car in order to change a tire, well, that would be the screw being used as a car jack and you will see there's an example in the video for the inclined plane i used the ramp and some heavy objects on this card here for the block and tackle you can see them right here so they're industrial sized and i put a lot of water into this bucket here and use this block and tackle in order to pull the bucket up and see what i get and finally, I think, the lever. So here I used a shovel as a lever in order to lift part of this armchair that you see over here. And then I have a fulcrum down here. And I think that's actually the lap on simple machine. So for the next, wow, I think it's in about an hour, I have all the videos. And at some point, you also have to use that pulley simulation applet. All right, I'm gonna try this in one take, which is not true because this is already my second take. So this is gonna be the board that will be an incline in a moment. The board is 81 centimeters long or 0.81 meters. I'm gonna put these thingies underneath so it's gonna lift it each time by 0.02 meters or two centimeters, four centimeters, six centimeters, or 0 0.04 and 0 0.06 meters. So we're gonna have an incline here. And then we're gonna take these two weights here. They're identical, they're each 500 grams. So when I put this one on here, it says 500 grams and five newtons. Actually, it doesn't say five newtons, or in this case, 1000 grams and 10 newtons because they didn't put the newton scale on here. This is a scale It's supposed to read weight and force not just mass 
I guess the two are almost synonymous, but still there's a difference, it's hard to read. Force. This one here, unfortunately, does. The other one, I'm going to use that in a moment. In any case, I'm going to take this one here, lift these up here, and I would have to exert a force of 10 newtons and lift it over a distance, a height of 0 0.02 meters, and that will give me the work done by simply lifting it without the incline. Now, the incline is supposed to make it easier for me, so I would have to exert less force. This is where I'm going to use the other spring scale. I'm going to tear it first, though, because this will make it easier for me to pull along. Imagine that you have big beer barrels here or something else, a piano pushed up here, and that's what an incline would be for. Or a wheelchair, you know, lifting somebody in a wheelchair is going to be a whole lot harder than it is to actually have them roll up the incline or push or pull them there. So here we go. I'm going to pull these up from the bottom here, so a distance of 0.81 meters, and apparently I have to exert 3.1 newtons. There we go. All right, that was actually the first measurement. The second one, so we make the incline higher, 0 0.04 centimeters. And pull this one up here. And I'm measuring 3.4 newtons. And technically I'm supposed to pull it all the way up here. There we go. And then here, of course, the steeper the incline is, the more force I have to exert. You will see, on the other hand, the, also the more efficient it gets, simply because actually on a steeper incline there is less friction, which is what I have to work against. But of course, we would, if you use an incline, you probably want to go with a shallow one. So this one here reads 3.5 newtons. And these are actually the measurements. And then my incline falls apart. So I tried pretty hard to find an incline applet that I like that applies to what I want to show, and I just couldn't. I mean, this is this one here is actually from PHET, Physics Educational Technologies, but it just doesn't work for me, not what, what I want. I can do this here, I can lift this up and down here, and this person here can push the file cabinet down, and then friction slows it down, or the person can push this file cabinet up, and there it goes, or I can change the position of the file cabinet <coughs> and do this to the person or he can push it into the wall there, or maybe not. In any case, it just didn't work. Didn't also do me any good if I tried to change this here to a refrigerator, and the piano is really small. That would be the coolest thing actually to show, um, because that's where you need a ramp, you know, push a piano up a ramp or a refrigerator, I guess. In any case, it just didn't work for me. So we're skipping this part here. There is no applet incline. This is a great applet because it's doing exactly what I would be doing in the real experiment. It starts out like this one here, and then it has all kinds of things set up for measuring and computations and so on and is that exactly like I wanted in my experiment. Let me just hit the play button here. Okay, that didn't work so let me actually increase, increase the force here and this is kind of how it works but I really want to mimic my real experiment so I'm gonna reset this one here and here's what I'd like you to do. Change to the double compound and when you do that, notice the little hand grabs right here. This is where the spring scale would be. And this little part right here, that would be the hauling line. And if you increase the applied force, you can see this is what's called the hauling line. The other four that you see here, these are the segment lines or line segments. And 
that's also in a pulley system the ideal mechanical advantage which by the way which by the way they have written right here notice it says four right here I consider this one over here by the way the cheat sheet all right let me introduce you to the whole thing here so again I'm gonna reset all of this so double compound I like you to increase the load to the maximum of 10 newtons which is one kilogram I actually use the same number in my real experiment increase the distance to as much as you can 0.2 meters I actually prefer one meter but I think the reason that that they didn't do it is that uh, if you were to lift this one here one meter you would actually have to pull this one down the hauling line here four meters and that gets off the screen maybe that's why they restricted it to 0.2 meters okay if we left the friction at zero then we would get perfect data and 100 percent efficiency which is not the case in the real experiment we do have friction between the segment lines and the pulleys and of course we also have to um, raise the lower pulley system here which by the way they didn't put in here as um, being used for the analysis so they assume that it actually has no mass that's a little bit off oh well so let's increase the friction here and I just use an arbitrary value of 0.24 it could be uh, lots of things oh by the way as you can see this one here has two significant figures this actually also has two significant figures okay notice here right here so this is actually 0 0.20 and this one too this also has two significant figures actually kind of three but let's call it two all right so we're going to deal with two significant figures all the way through here the pulley diameter we really don't need I think that's that affects actually the friction simply because they're larger so the line segments um, have more contact so we're just going to leave it at the point two then this one over here the measurements we're going to turn these on and then actually it says right here only the first five are displayed so if I check them all you know I would have to turn some off so it can show the lower ones so let me just leave it on here by the way all these measurements here I call it the, this the cheat sheet because this is virtually what you find in my table on the real experiment as well as this this applet simulation all right other things we could do is we could show the forces on strands here actually I haven't tried that yet so let's see what happens there uh, okay I'm not sure if I see something here all right oh well let me just reset this one here and turn it off hmm. I haven't investigated that yet anyway we could also look at it from the side or the front but I actually do want to look at it from an at an angle because here I can definitely see it has four segment lines on a side view actually two of them overlap so it's hard to see right also we have four segment lines and later for the triple compound we have six and then for the quadruple we're gonna have eight and if you count them it is eight and of course this one that you pull on here doesn't count for the segment lines because that's the hauling line let me go back to the double compound by the way notice that the first line segment is attached to the upper pulley and that therefore we will get an even number sometimes I rig it up in the lab just like that starting at the upper pulley sometimes at the lower pulley at which point I actually end up with an odd number of line segments but that doesn't matter as far as figuring out the experiment is concerned taking the measurement in any case we have four six and eight segment lines or line segments which you will find in the table in the lab menu okay let's start out with double compound and this these are the parameters that I want you to choose at all times except of course you're gonna switch then from the double to the triple to the quadruple one as you do that for the three sets of data to, that I want you to take all right so let's apply a force and so I'm gonna pull this one up here and it reads 2.965 force by the way I tried to pull it up higher it doesn't get any higher I guess they put it in such a way that it matches the friction and as it matches the friction the two forces equal out to zero so zero acceleration then means constant velocity if you actually pulled it up higher if you were able to do that again I wasn't able to do that then actually the thing would accelerate you would get faster and faster that's probably not what you do when when you are using a pulley system you're probably trying to pull at a constant speed which means your force has to match the frictional force to have zero acceleration 
and therefore have a constant velocity. Okay, so here we're done, and we read off a bunch of numbers, so let's go over to the analysis. So I need a little bit more space here for the analysis. All right, still need to push it in a little bit here. And almost there, almost there. I guess now the experiment itself is off screen, but what can you do? There we go, that should work. All right, so I already put these parameters in here. As I said, I'd like you to keep the same parameters throughout. So one kilogram, which is the 10 newtons, which is over here, which you can see on the load. And then the height, the maximum height of 0 0.20 meters. And as I said, I like to keep this at two significant figures. Okay, then computing the work. And you can see these equations. If the equation is not listed here, it's over here, just off the screen, right here, I guess. Oh, shoot. <laughs> right over here so here would be the equations i guess i could have done that and so you have to apply these all right so i can get back here and oh yeah this is what i wanted to do yeah push them back in here there we go all right so the work without the pulleys just lifting the, the thing would be the height that it's going through the 0.2 meters times the weight of the load so 10 times 0.2 is 2.0 joules right there by the way that's this one right here the work output is also that what I call the work without the pulleys and that also matches the potential energy so this one right here, what I call the work lift, they call the work output, respectively potential energy. Okay. The ideal mechanical advantage in a pulley system is really easy to determine. Just count the number of light segments that are supporting the weight. There were four, so the ideal mechanical advantage is four. That should cut down the expected effort force to one quarter of the original. So as I'm trying to... Um, lift a load that has 10 newtons i should be able to apply just one quarter of that so 2.5 newtons okay that's what my spring scale should read however there's friction so it won't read that all right the hauling part distance notice here they wrote 0.8 meters this makes total sense i'm going to write it again with two significant figures makes total sense because i need to pull each of these strings here, these four strings right here, I need to pull them up 0.2 meters, each of them. That means I have to pull a total of 0.8 meters because that string, the last one here on the right hand side, that one is connected to all the others. So it has to pull down 0.8 meters in order to make each one of them go up by 0.2. It's all one string. Okay, so that's the 0.8 meters. Let's see. Push this out a little bit more. All right. Oh, actual measured force. Shouldn't have put a, pulled out so much. Okay, here it is. 2.965. A little bit too much on the side of sig fig. Let's just run it to 2 sig fig 3.0. And I can't... actually measure that accurately anyway in a real experiment. I mean, I can only measure to 2 sig fig with the spring scales that I have. So 3.0 newtons. And I do need that measurement from here. It needs to tell me that that's what over here in the spring scale right here with the handles grabbing on. That's what I would read off right there. All right. So let's see what else we got. Work without the pulleys then actually means me pulling with 3.0 newtons for a distance of 0.8 meters, which means I come up with 2.4 joules. That's the amount of work that I put in. That 2.4 joules matches this one here, what they call the work input. I call the work done with pulleys. Same thing, of course, again, I rounded to two significant figures. Okay, the actual mechanical advantage is comparing the work done with the pulleys to the work done without the pulleys. Notice I actually had to invest more work into it because of the friction 
than if I hadn't done it, but at least the pulley system made it easier for me. It cut down the expected force, respectively the actual measured force from 10 newtons down to 2.5 or 3.0 newtons. So it makes the job easier. I'm not going to get a free lunch. It's still the same amount of work, respectively even more because of the friction. In any case, the actual mechanical advantage is being multiplied, I'm sorry, not multiplied, determined by dividing the 10 newtons here, the load force by the applied force, so 10 divided by 3.0 comes out to 3.33333. Technically two significant figures, but for the mechanical advantage, I really like to have integers there because you're not going to talk about a machine and say, hey, it has a mechanical advantage of 3.33. No, let's just call it 3. That's good enough. By the way, when I uncheck a few things over here, we can see there they are, right? So here is the ideal mechanical advantage of 4, again, the 4 line segments, and then here the 3.37, and as I said, I round it to the nearest integer, which is 3. All right, and then last, the efficiency. That would be the lift work here divided by the work done with the pulleys. If these two were equal, we would come up with one if we divided them, which means 100% efficiency, but we're dividing by a larger number, so we get something less than 1, in fact, we get 0.84, notice this one over here, right? So as we divide these two, 0.84, but then we're going to, whoops, shift the decimal point in order to get percent. So 84%, that's the efficiency for this experiment. Again, we're not getting a free lunch. In fact, we have to do a little bit more work because of friction, but at least it makes the job easier. The biggest pulleys that you see these days, I believe, is actually in shipyards where they are unloading containers from container ships and they have these huge pulleys and therefore the machinery has to do, has to apply less force. They still have to do the same amount of work in order to lift them and then place them somewhere, but at least the machines can do it. All right, so what you have to do now is you have to use the applet in order to complete this one here using the triple compound and quadruple compound pulley systems. But just in case that the applet is not going to work for you, I actually will record this for you. But you still would have to do the calculations. All right, so here I'm going to reset this one here from my double compounds, leave everything else the same. You can click on everything here. And now switch to triple compound. There it is. And yeah, everything else stays the same. And I'm going to apply the force. Again, this is where it actually maxed out. And we give it a little time here. In the meantime, obviously it makes sense that the line segments, there are six of them. Also gives us the ideal mechanical advantage of six. That one I can, that much I can give away. And that as I'm lifting this here 0.2 meters, I should come up with 1.2 meters for the hauling line. In fact, it's going to show us that in just a moment. All right. Oh, it is getting a little off screen here. Oh, it really goes off screen. Okay. There it is, 1.2 meters, right? And then this one here, again, you can use as a sheet sheet and I would have to click a few off after you read these off here so you can see the remainder so these are the remainders right there's the six and I like you to also calculate them in the table all right and preferably I like you to do this simulation here only if the simulation doesn't load for you on your computer yeah go ahead and use what I'm showing you here all right, I'm going to reset this one here and then click on quadruple compound and there would be eight lines now. Again, I'm going to push this one up. Apparently, we need only 1.6 newtons because there are so many segment lines supporting it. So it really cut down on that. We have eight lines 
supporting it. So the mechanical advantage is eight. And if I divide 10 newtons by eight, I come up with 1.25 newtons. That would be the ideal force. And I gave it a different name, right? What did I call it? The expected effort force is what I gave it the name. But of course, the applied force, the actual applied force is larger due to friction. And in a moment, we will see that the hauling line goes down by 1.6 meters because it needs to lift each one of these eight lines by 0.2 meters. There it is, 1.6. And again, these are actually the first five measurements here. So you can jot these down or use them as a cheat sheet. And then we're going to turn these off here and you can see the remainder there. All right, that's it for this pulley simulation.